battle for the last hit, QO, not gonna win that battle, but how? Remember, you don't have a replicate right now, we're still on cooldown for two more seconds, and QO trying to beat into him, there's more support moving up, and FY might regret this rotation. As now, KP as well as Febby have arrived here, how still being charged, and they keep that vision up, QO is making the move, there's that replicate, but how? do they have enough control again, no waveform this time, and there's a 17% kicking in Fenrir, they're gonna have to turn for help, I find size, hook shotting in, KP needs to blink himself away, need more time, Shallow Grave, Witch Doctor, the Death Wall's going on, I find size, but the Blade now turned on, the Paralyzing Cast, Fenrir and Super, they're basically holding hands, the back lines, the Shallow Grave is there for nuts, but his chance of survival is so low, turns on the Restoration, they're nobering up, they see Febby with a Life Strike Array, barely missing from Super, so Morphling will drop, and in trade you lose your Spirit Breaker and your Witch Doctor. I think MVP are okay with this exchange. Considering how the whole fight developed, that could have gone way worse for them. It was fairly even, the experience is only different by maybe 300, 400, gold only 200. That's from our teamfight recap, so it's not much of a difference, and now you actually get something like a Blink Dagger over on QO. You thought life was hard as a support before, it's about to get a lot harder. Yeah, I, th I think... If MVP could take that fight five times in a row right now, where they trade March and a support to kill the Morphling, I think they would win the game. Like, the entire win condition for Vichy Gaming is that this Morphling does get strong, as well as the Lina. And of course, Super did stay alive there. I think the kill did go to the Crystal Maiden on the Spirit Breaker. Yeah, it did. So, he got none of the last hits there. But, the Slark is starting to get a really solid grip on the game. That one kill on Morphling, you remember a moment ago I said Morphling was 100 ahead? He's yep. a thousand behind. That's the kind of shift you get from making a play like that. QO, as long as the Lina doesn't just blow him up in a combo, there's almost nothing countering him out. And we see a quick Orchid here as well from KP. Very good item against both Morphling and the Lina, although she does have a Yule to be used defensively, of course. This gives him even more aggression when MVP looks for fights, but VG Gaming are the ones looking for it. A three-man smoke move, they're gonna walk into QO. He blinks himself forward right now and being bursted down! There goes your Slark with a Sonic Wave steal of Rubik. FY. As we said, never underestimated, but now KP comes back for revenge for what was stolen. Baby can't move close enough to him, but March, he can. The charge comes forward, the cops get them back for now. Oh, Remember that weave is there, Mark being stunned, looking to play the Shallow Grave, keeping him alive for now. He goes for the ulti, but then the Yules up in the air. It's going to be the Queen of Pain. March still alive for the moment around the tree line. They do bring him down, but KP in real trouble. Sonic Waves in one second, he needs more time. Blink away to safety. He's bottling up, already used the one charges. He could turn, he's got Sonic Wave plus Scream of Armor hiding inside the tree line for the moment, but he'll blink in deeper. Meanwhile, Febby is actually chasing down Ice 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 in the bottom river. That urn charge, he's so low, but not low enough to find the kill. The rocket actually scouts out Febby. Is it worth? No, he doesn't actually have rock. Still on cooldown for 20 seconds, and the rocket damage is not enough. A little bit of uh, panic or miscommunication from Beachy Gaming there. They layered their, their stuns on the Queen of Pain, or rather the Lina stun and the Crystal Maiden Frostbite. If they combine those correctly, they do find that absolutely key kill, but still. They got the better exchange here, a lot of gold going their way, especially the Slark kill was really massive for FY. Being a low gold support, uh, or actually, who got the last hit on him? Oh, I can't see that anymore now. I can't remember. It, I don't think it was FY himself. Uh, anyway, who claimed that kill got quite a bit of gold out. Alright, I can't help you on that front, Fenrir. Oh, no one be able to help him in a moment. He's walking right next to QO, and then, well, there's your Dark Pack. How much damage have you got, Fenrir? Not enough to get the kill. So he helps himself with that Lincoln Sphere. 19 minutes up for Hal. A very nice timing for the Morphling and a lot more protection against this MVP lineup. But how much more does he need? Do we still go for that E-Blade? Is E-Blade actually going to do anything up against MVP? Yes, absolutely. It, like, it makes Laguna Blade just destroy anyone. Until, of course, he gets the Axe, then it's pure damage, so then E-Blade doesn't amplify it anymore. But in either case, he's he's definitely going to have a lot of damage. It is, however, possible that he doesn't go for it at all. And what makes me think this is that he didn't go Adaptive Strike. He actually took a point of stats over it. He's level 11 with a, a 4042 build. So you so, turn it more into a fighter build, something more like a Skadi? I'm guessing so, and that they feel yeah. like they have enough magic damage alone with the, all of their other heroes, which, you know, it's kind of that thing you want to find the right balance between spell burst and having physical carry late game. And a lot of the time, the E-Blade is just very powerful, but... The more I think about it, the better it probably is to just go for a, a combat build this time around.
Charges coming down. We might actually see Crystal made it getting popped. QO just catching Fenrir out of position. He was moving up into his own jungle. That leash is holding him a little bit too much longer. And then Clockwork while QO breaks free of the sun almost instantly with the Orchid on Ice Ice Ice. They don't want to throw on anything more apart from the Death Lord. The QO coming back in the fight. Ice 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 almost down, but still alive until KP finally puts him in the grave. One for one trap and March looking for the only and there's just Sonic Wave. He's still got Nether Strike, but Super with the strike there is going to keep him now. In fact, the Lincoln to be triggering. Blocking it. It's a two for two trade off, and QO is still alive. Blinks away to safety. How not attacking him, so not putting that blink dagger back on cooldown. And QO wants to come back in again. The Observer Ward's up so they can see where VG is moving. In fact, Hal just walks straight into him. The Lincoln Spear trigger into the Orc. And he actually got to use the Shadow Strike to do it. And Hal dropping low. Life Strike already won't better connect. But Hal with so much strength, 2,000 life. They get rid of the Observer Ward. But QO back in again. Playing with its force in the back line. While Hal realizes it. He has to turn around to help out his team. QO is still very low. But out of vision. Healing up quickly with the bottle charges. Fenrir back already. But super. QO. Yeah. That's not going to happen. <laughs> If he actually would have gone for that, <laughs> this guy is nice call. He is exceptionally good as Lark, by the way. I think he's one of the best players in the world on this hero. He's he's shown it time and time again. How good he is at getting in and out of fights and really evaluating how far he can stretch before he has to go back out and regen. This fight, he makes the right call not to chase one more time onto the Lina. He would have pretty much surely died. Here. But his pressure onto the VG supports, the second he did that, like, you, you saw Morphling. Like, Hal was almost certain he was having himself a kill right there and then realized he has to turn around and help out the rest of his teammates. That pressure from Slark, you're always looking behind you. Amar should be doing the same thing as he's about to get initiated on there. Still 1700 life to get through. Yours into, yeah. the, into, the, into the line strike plus Laguna Blade. It sounds like a lot, but it really isn't when you have that much damage on Beachy. But then you have Alina and then 1700 is not much. And there's 400 gold from the Ags. So the Super's about to get a big, big upgrade with his ultimate. I'm wondering if uh, Vici Gaming are expecting that a BKB will come out sometime soon. Uh, it looks like the Queen of Pain actually is building one, so that's going to be very nice for dealing with KP for Super. As their physical damage output right now is, as we talked about, really underwhelming. Mm -hmm. So when those BKBs come out, they need to have a solution to kill the BKB. But I'm actually wondering too then with Slark, we're seeing QR building building into uh, the Scardi. Is it even worth him going a BKB in this game? Or should you just go for more points? Is Fenrir? Well, I get rid of the Observer Ward to start with, and FY and Fenrir both moving in. But QO's not even going for that. He sees how in the mid, but nope, turns around. Comes back into Fenrir and FY, Frostbite and Telekinesis. Not the greatest chain in the world, but they knew the Dark Pack. He's going to break free, pounce up into Ice Ice Ice. The bounce from Marsh, actually knocking Ice 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 back. They're able to get the Dark off with the Sonic Wave, hitting three heroes from Fiji, and now the Paralyzing Cask. It's going to actually trigger the Lincoln Spear. But at the same time, Super and Fenrir, they can't run. It's back Super, March another charge, heating into Hal, might even push him up on top of the cliffside, he's inside the rock face, Hal bashed again, 77%, oh, Hal is dead, March, breaking the game, and winning the fight for MVP, they do the work and they'll take the Roshan. This is what happens one out of 200 times when you have an ability that's true random and not pseudo random, March got so lucky there. <laughs> Oh, it's unbelievable. It's possible they could have caught Howe anyway, but that's got to You know, that's such a mental blow. You feel like the game just cheated you, right? Yep. You, you had this Morphling, you had a Lincoln Spear. The, the sad thing is, too, the Paralyzing Cask works so well against it. It triggers a Lincoln Spear, but it doesn't actually stop the Cask from bouncing. So it bounces up and then straight back down. He still gets stunned. The Lincoln Spear actually became a non-factor. Apart from stats and regen, that's all it was. That was such a good cast. I think it got all the bounces off. It bounced yep. between it, Lina and CM at least three times. And yep. It even came back down to the Morphling after they were looking for the kill. It's... Wow, look at that spike up. That's... For the first time in 24 minutes, the entire game, MVP, you're actually leading by a smidge on the gold and the net worth up by 6,000 they gained during that last engagement. This is when you want to put on the pressure if you're MVP. QO is getting close to Scotty and... It's almost impossible for Vichy Gaming to, to kill him twice. Mm -hmm. also wait a second, Lina went, for a diff went in a different direction. We thought she was going to go for the Axe. Yeah, hey, we wait, what? It's we, a Soul Booster. Yeah, we uh, disregarded the possibility of going for a Bloodstone. I definitely don't think this is an Octarine Core for Super. 
Now, what's really interesting about this is that this makes BKBs on MVP so much better. Now, Slark might actually consider it after his Scotty just to be completely invincible. March, gonna try and charge away, but Yulsip is gonna stop this one and then wait for March is dead. Hilariously enough, FY is still actually the worst ability you get in the game, which was the empowering haste at the start. So, hey, get S SB triggered it. You're right, like, he actually keeps the passive from this at least. Yep. No, it's not. It's not very good. <laughs> no, it's not. Are you, are you trying to find a logical way where it's like, you know what, actually, it's going to work really well for VG with a high order ability lineup. Yeah, the thing, if you look over MVP's lineup, if they had less mobile heroes, something like that movement speed would be really good, but it just seems like MVP will beat them at the mobility game anyway. So, it doesn't really matter. QO with his farm and Midas usage, he is now 300 gold away from having the full Skadi. Be careful with his courier. And also we also get Febby uh, able to start buying up items as he's now got a talisman of, of evasion. So that's sitting over on the courier. There's also a lot of money on the Witch Doctor. Kind of haven't flagged nuts. Of course we flagged his paralyzing cast, but not his money. When this Agadim Scepter starts to arrive, it's already a hard enough time for heroes like Crystal Maiden and Rubik. It's gonna be a it's gonna be an impossible time. If, unless they can keep their distance. Gloomer Cape away. FY does have that blink dagger. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Bottom lane. March is just going in. Okay. He used both his spells. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, once again. Something I really like about if you look at the pattern of how March plays on the Spirit Breaker, there are two things he does. He's extremely selfless. He will in, engage the fight pretty much to surely die, but set up his team very well. And he will just threaten constantly. Even if he knows he can't get the kill, he wants to make the enemy think that backup is coming and that the kill is there. So he just forces them away and gives them map control. He's 2 and 9. He's had a massive impact on this offlane Spirit Breaker this team. And he can have more because the Daz is behind him now with a full Solar Crest as well. So even if you are low, you're gonna have extra support to keep you up, and this allows heroes like players like QO to move forward and attack into that T1 tower. He's got no real worries anyway. In fact, they're gonna solo crest him up at the moment. But with an Aegis Immortal and 15 wand charges, a full Scarly Blink Dagger, you know you're gonna regenerate up quickly anyway. He's also gonna crack level 16 in just a moment. So now we'll have a level 3 on that Shadow Dance. VG Gaming are in such a rough spot. They need a fantastic fight. They need how to do something more. And Ice 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 not to die. The charge.